For me, when I walk through a stand of hemlock trees, I feel something emotional about them. So when I found out that the Nature Conservancy was working on tree species in peril and looking at five of the most imperiled trees in the Northeast, including hemlock, I called the person managing the project and said, I want in. Because of the threats of invasive insects and diseases, we're risking uh, extinction of a lot of these species. We're risking our forest completely changing to something that we can't really predict. We can see here we've got some hemlocks growing along a little riparian corridor. That's going to keep our temperatures cold, our waters cold. Hemlock woolly adelgid has really come in in the southern part of the United States. If you look at North Carolina and Tennessee and parts of Virginia, there are few healthy hemlocks standing. Here in the Northeast where I work, we're really fortunate that we still have healthy hemlocks, but it's possible in my lifetime that those trees will be gone. We're looking at the three most widespread ash species in the Northeastern US, which are white ash, green ash, and a black ash. White ash and green ash in some places are important components of the forest here and actually are even more important components as you head more into the Midwest. American elm is a really widely distributed species, um, but we think of it primarily as a floodplain species. And it grows throughout the Northeast in pretty much every type of floodplain forest you can think of. It's the second most abundant floodplain tree species along our major riverways. It's one that plays an outsized role in the structure and function of that ecosystem. And that's one that it's really hard for us to appreciate today because we can still see elm everywhere, but it dies at a really young age before it reaches that full potential. Beech trees are one of our most important food producers in our forest. They provide food for black bear all the way down to small mice and to rodents. And so it's so important to keep these trees. The forests are taking carbon dioxide out of the air. They're storing it in their trunks. They're storing it underground and natural climate solutions are a vital part of our future. And yet as forest pests and pathogens come in and cause significant mortality in these forests, they can no longer hold that forest carbon and take up that forest carbon in order to help us have a cleaner, healthier future. Challenging times bring people together. And, and so for all of these species we're talking about, you know, trying to sustain ash, trying to sustain hemlock and beech, it's really brought together diverse partnerships. Um, you know, if we think about the ash issue alone, you know, tribes from across the lake states in the Northeast are sharing information. Also, federal agencies are communicating and interacting with tribes and state agencies. And so you have these partnerships that are building that are sharing information and really, I think, sharing hope and, and stories of what's working, what isn't, and what can we learn from each other. Ash is essential to the Wabanaki people because at one time it was the only economic development that we had, you know. Most everybody, all four tribes, you know, made baskets for an income. You know, especially here in Aroostook County, you know, my family made a lot of potato baskets, making as many as 10 to 12 dozen baskets a week. Well, it's a way of life. So many people depend on it, rely on it. It's something that we really enjoy doing. A lingering hemlock is a hemlock tree that's actually surviving when everything around it appears to be dying from pests or pathogens. And so the hunt is on for lingering hemlock. So these are individual trees that are showing some resistance to these invasive pests. And so as part of that, we're collecting that material and we're sequencing that material, both to understand the diversity of what the species have to work with in terms of a genetic background, but also understand when we do find individuals that seem to have more resistance or are lingering, what parts of their genome are contributing to that. We are developing all of the techniques that are needed to have a full breeding program so that you're producing improved seed, seed that has higher levels of resistance, a higher frequency of resistance, that's gonna produce seedlings that are gonna survive that invasive insect and pest or disease. There's definitely hope. We've detected resistance and we know we can improve resistance through breeding. 
in green ash and white ash and most likely in black ash and blue ash. As far as hemlock, there's also hope because there's a lot of hemlock trees that are surviving and we're just now getting to really dig into the types of genetic studies that will prove that there is heritable resistance, which is what's needed to show that we can breed and improve resistance in hemlock. There are people all across the hemlock range and across the range of ash and beech and these imperiled species that are now talking with each other, that are saving some of these trees. And the best thing is nature's resilient. These forests are resilient and the answers are out there. We just have to find them.